Hello everyone, I'm, today I'm going to be talking about Daniel Caesar and I'm going to be ranking every one of his songs. I did this with Dominic Fike and I also ranked Kanye's albums. So I'm just doing like kind of my favorite artists that I, I know like pretty much every song. I'll probably do Cuddy, Isaiah Rashad. I think there's like two I really, I could do. Uh, there's not too many others I know like every single song to be honest. I'm doing every one of his songs. Uh, to be honest, the only issue with this is the the site that I'm using to rank. It doesn't have his first EP. It doesn't have Praise Break. But yeah, so let's just get right into it. Yeah, so full disclosure, here is my Praise Break ranking. But I, I couldn't add them because they're not... I, I tried submitting it and trying to get the album approved, but it, it didn't. So basically 55 and 53, we have Pseudo and then Violet. 41, a little bit higher, End of the Road. 36, Human Sacrifice. 32, Chevalier. And 31, Porn Star, which... It's pretty low, actually, for that. I, I really like this song. And then number 21, Knock at Your Door. That's not on Praise Break, but that's another song I couldn't find on here. Couldn't find it anywhere, actually. I don't know why I have that song, but where it's from, but it's really cool. I think it's a, uh, it a SoundCloud thing. I don't know. So the highest one, Knock at Your Door and Porn Star and Chevalier. Those are, like, really solid songs. Um, Human Sacrifice is also good, but then End of the Road's a little... Eh. Violet and Pseudo there. I mean, Pseudo, I think, is his worst song. I think I actually have that ranked as his worst song. Pseudo and then Violet. Those are, like, really low for him. Anyway, I'm just going to get into all of the other stuff. So, at number 49, we have Restore the Feeling off of uh, Case Study 01, which I think we'll see a general theme that it's probably my least favorite. But anyway... Uh, Restore the Feeling, that one's with Sean Leon, and I personally, I can't stand Sean Leon. Every time he's on a feature, he's on a Kanye album, I didn't like him. And yeah, I just don't like the song at all. Sean Leon's on it. They all sing really weird. There's another feature that uh, was okay. Uh, not a fan of this one at all. I think it's the worst Daniel Caesar song besides... I actually had Pseudo and Violet in these, um, but it's a little tricky the way I did it, the way I numbered it, but whatever. All right, next up, continuing the theme of me not really being the biggest case study 01 fan, um, we have Love Again. This one's featuring Brandy. And yeah, this is just, I don't like the way he sings on the song. And Brandy does not make it better. <laughs> I, know she's, uh, I know she's done a lot of classics and she's considered a pretty good singer. But yeah, Love Again, not for me. These two are probably two of his worst songs he's ever done, in my opinion. But next up, we have Show No Regret. Yeah, I think this one is also a really weak one. To be honest, I kind of don't even really remember this one. That goes to show how little I know or care about it. This one surprises me. But number 46, we have New Roses, the Transgressors song. You know what? New Roses is definitely the strongest out of these so far, I think. New Roses, it's a, it's it's cool. It has like that uh the choirs and the harmonies and everything, but uh I don't know. The only part I really like about this is like near the end. I'm not gonna really include his his praise break, I guess. Even though Porn Star is an amazing song and Chevalier is awesome. At number 45, we have Acapella. Which I did not know it was two words, but apparently it is. I for the longest time thought it was one, but it's two words. But yeah, this one's cool. Um, but definitely Oh my gosh, I love his album cover too. That album cover is so sick. I, I never listen to this one, and if it comes on, I usually skip it. It, it is beautiful, but and it's done well. But it's just not my thing, really. Apparently, because New Roses kind of had something similar-ish. All right, number forty-four. Once again, we have a case study of one. Uh, so frontal lobe music, and this one's with Pharrell. This one's weird, and I remember when this came out. I think this might have been the single. This or Cyanide, I thought was a single, but when this one came out, I was like, oh boy, not sure if I'm a fan of this at all. And this one just left a, poor, a bad taste in my mouth for the entire album, really. I did not care for this song. And you know what's interesting about Case Study 01 is uh, it's obviously like trying to be very experimental. And it worked on some songs, uh, but this is one of the examples where it just doesn't for me. And I know it's Pharrell, and I'm I, like I love Pharrell for like a hip hop perspective, like what he did for the culture and everything. But Pharrell does some weird stuff, and he brings out the weirdness in others sometimes. And this is just one of those examples I'm not the biggest fan of. Number forty three 
is Transform. Yeah, this one just doesn't really do it for me. Uh, not too much to say about this one, really. But you know what's crazy? Maybe I just haven't spent enough time with this one because I just jogged my memory on what this one was and it sounded beautiful. <laughs> but it's Deus Easier. I mean, almost everything he does is beautiful. So the fact that this is low is kind of interesting and I might disagree with my own take. This was from a couple months ago, this list, but still, that's, a, that's kind of a hot take. So number 42, we have Toronto 2014. Now this song would be so much higher if it wasn't for Mustafa. I not a fan of Mustafa at all. He's also on Metro Boomin. Don't Kill Civilians, yeah. No. Not a fan. And also he he kinda like has a pretty big part and like it's it's hard to just overlook that for me. But then freaking Daniel comes on, and he's amazing and it, it damn 42 is so low for this, but it it's just what it is. I'm not a fan of uh Mustafa. Alright, and then number 41, we have Disillusioned. Wait a second. I love this song. See, this just goes to show, like, people are going to be like, oh, my God, this, this, why is this so low? This so low? Uh, sorry, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I guess it's just I like so many of his songs better than this. That's all. That's all there is to it. If this song was on someone else's discography, it'd be one of their best songs ever. But it's just Daniel Caesar. His bars are high, and I love so many more songs. Uh, I don't like the feature, really. I don't like him with people, it seems. Or not many people. He has Serpent with Feats on here. I tried to get in his music. I couldn't. I don't like Serpent with Feats voice, really. Uh, but uh, Daniel kills it. And he brings it back. And he's like, uh, the whole, and do what lovers do. And do, 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 the boardwalk part. I mm, freaking love this song. But that's kind of a hot take. Dang. Uh, Transform and Disillusion. Those two could be a lot higher, honestly. <laughs> Number 40, we have superpowers now this one is the only reason it's this low uh i like the sound of it his vocals and everything it's just uh not the biggest fan of the lyric they're a little bit corny to me like, you give me superpowers and uh i know he doesn't sing like that <laughs> that was a horrible rendition of it all right number 39 we have open up boom 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 I love that part, and the uh, instrumental on this is awesome. The guitar is cool. Again, it just got pushed down because of other songs. Uh, there's nothing really bad about it. <laughs> it's a pretty good song. At number 38, we have Paradise. And guess who's on it? Sean Leon. <laughs> uh, I'm telling you, anytime Sean Leon's on a song, it tends to bring your weight out. <laughs> Sorry to Sean Leon. Like, your voice is okay. It just annoys me. I'm not the biggest fan. Oh, uh, wait, yeah, no, no, I'm, this one's coming back to me now, uh, Paradise. This is the one where he has that horrible verse. He's like, yeah, I don't want to be a meaner. Yeah, I'm a meaner. Yeah, no, Sean Leon, no, nah, he ruined the song. At number 37, we have Blessed. Now, Blessed is absolutely beautiful, but something about it just does not uh, connect with me. Maybe it's a little bit long or something. Uh, it's still a beautiful song. At 36, we have Pain is Inevitable. Which this one's cool. The distortion and... If that's the one I'm thinking. Oh, yeah. Pain is inevitable. Misery is a choice. Ah, oh, so Sometimes it's so bad with remembering. Until I hear it. Oh, yeah, okay. So, uh, Pain is Inevitable. Yeah, it does have the distortion and the really, really trippy ending for like the last minute and a half or two. Uh, that part's amazing, and I get lost in that song, but it takes a little while to get there. It's cool. It's just not like, I don't know. It's not my absolute favorite from him. This album, <laughs> this album's crazy. Okay, number 35, we have always the remix version, because why, why, why are you adding people to this song? This song is a masterpiece in my eyes. Why would you add freaking Summer Walker? She did okay, but like, you just don't touch songs like this. There's some songs you just don't remix, and this should absolutely be one of them. It's still beautiful, obviously. I mean, most of it hasn't been changed except adding Summer Walker, but... All right, number 34, Vince Van Gogh. Disillusion should honestly be probably like around this. I, we, yeah, it's the super trippy one. He's like, whoa, the philosophy is hitting yeah <laughs> this one's cool it's just not that 
were memorable to me, except for that like couple little parts in there. Thirty three, we have Buyer's Remorse with Omar Apollo. One of the one of the solid features on this album, honestly. I like the feature on this one. Yeah, no. Freaking love that. If it's a sample, I don't know what it is. Just that like backing sample thing. And this one's a really nice gentle song. And Omar Apollo does really good on this, surprisingly. Because I, I don't think Daniel Caesar works. Doesn't have the best features, to be honest, in my opinion. But okay, number 32, Waiting in Vain. Now, this is just a uh, cover. Bob Marley cover and it's most recent release and this is such a good sign and it honestly has grown on me since I made this list so this one might even be a little higher no I don't, actually I don't think so I don't think it would be higher but it, this is a good spot this is very this is a good spot amazing beautiful cover I can't wait for his new album because of this 31 we have do you like me just a classic just an absolute classic. At first, I thought it was a little corny. I don't, I, I don't anymore. I, great song. At first, I was your friend. Yeah, great song. Uh, almost top 30. So at number 30, we have Who Hurt You? It was one of the singles around the time of Case Study 01. This one's another experimental one. Uh, just around that time, he was on some really experimental stuff. But it was cool. And the lyrics were really cool in this, the verses and everything, uh, being primal and all that. And then the chorus was really awesome. But yeah, that was just super solid. One. And then at 29, we have We Find Love. Ever since the day that I met you. Yeah. Mm, yeah, that sounds great. This whole album, I love Fruit and it's such a good album. And then 28, we have Valentina, the remix, the bonus track. And this one is the one, yeah, with Rick Ross. Uh, I thought Rick Ross did actually pretty good. Uh, it's just, I don't know. Um, I don't really have anything that negative to say um, about Rick Ross. Rick Ross did good. Uh, I just think the originals, I, I think the originals better. Not too upset at that one. I'm more upset at always. Come on. <laughs> don't add some, Summer Walker to always. 27, we have... The title track, Fruden. This one, the instrumentals are crazy. The bass, there's piano, the guitar in there. Everything's amazing in this. I love the song. And good good title track. It's the second to last track. But yeah, it's just it it's starting to wrap up the al- this album really well. I specifically like the bass in that. The number 26, we have Too Deep to Turn Back. This one's crazy. This one's experimental and there's that switch at the end uh that switch at the end is really weird and he has like the little rap singing type thing <laughs> that sounds really cool a five minute long song yeah i think it's just super solid and you don't really get bored because of the the switch near the end and then number 25 we have the original valentina because i mean it's just such a classic and then it's right after ojo rios and it flows really well from there into this one. And yeah, just super solid track. Every time I hear it, I, I literally will never skip this one. I love this song. Next song, 24, we have Take Me Away. Take Me Away featuring, yep, featuring Sid. Okay. Again, I really like the, uh, there's a little breakdown part in this uh, when Sid comes in. I really like that. Next up, 23, we have Cyanide Remix with Coffee. Now, Cyanide's another super classic song, and I think it's probably my favorite on probably my favorite one of my one of my favorites on uh, Case Study. But just to add coffee on it adds such a different vibe to it, and it it worked. It worked really well, and it's almost in my top twenty. But this is an example of when you remix a a really good song, and it's still really good. And then number twenty two, we have Entropy. Entropy that seems really low for. Entropy, to be honest. One of his best intros, actually. Entropy's really good opening song to the album. I remember hearing that and being like, oh, boy, this, I might really like this album. And then mm, there's a couple if you ones on Case Study. but Number 21, Shot My Baby. Dang, this one didn't make top 20. I love this song. You'd be shocked. Like, you could know someone's discography really well, and then you go make a video about it and try to talk about every song, and then you just forget... You forget so much about the songs. Yeah, no. 
Uh, I love the guitar in this. The the riffs or the weird it such a weird guitar on this but it sets the mood exactly for what he's going for and i this song's cool and it's, it's kind of cool because he's telling a story in this one too number 20 we have unstoppable this is the song where he says uh know them bitches talking know that shit before the birds yeah <laughs> i love his cadence and his uh delivery in this song unstoppable today was this the last song on the album Yes, it was. Yeah, that was that was a really good closer. That kind of reeled it back for me a little bit because before this we had um, Superpowers and Vince Van Gogh. And to me, and Pain is Inevitable. Those are all near the end of the album. And those are a little bit weaker to me. All right, number 19, Are You Okay? This one is heavenly. The atmosphere in this, the atmosphere creates and it just it takes you away it's somewhere else. And such a good closer for the album and i'm glad this one it wasn't too experimental to finish it off that's what i like i, I respected his experimentalness on this one but to just wrap it up with something so whole and complete as the last song is really solid mm, and then number 18 we have cool now cool i mean it speaks for itself so it makes me wish i could sing i can't i can't at all but such a good song such a just soft and ah, so easy such an easy listen for this one and then number 17 which is shockingly low i did not think it would be as low number 17 best part featuring her uh, nothing to even say just such a classic song uh one of his most popular too and for good reason everyone knows it's a great song or at least i hope so all right number 16 homosexual featuring ty doll sign this one's like an ode to like Old school R and B, and just it, just so catchy, and the way he sings on this is just so different than everything else. And I, I really respect this one. I I love that one. And Ty Dolla Sign, uh, yeah, he does good too, actually. So half of half of uh, Yen Money are there. <laughs> Big accomplishment there. <laughs> okay, now top fifteen. This is just the absolute best of the best, and. Every single one of these songs, I could see. If you said it was your favorite song, I, I don't blame you. Number fifteen, we have Streetcar. Now, if this was his original song and not a cover, it it easily be top ten. But it just gets negated a little bit for just being a cover of Kanye's song. But I mean, come on. If I could ask ask for anyone to cover that song, that song's already beautiful as is. And then just to add Dan Caesar, such a great voice on here. Actually, I wonder if this ranks higher than where I put Kanye's. Yeah, I don't know. Number 14, we have Loose. Another freaking legendary Daniel Caesar song. For me, again, it's just the atmosphere created in this one with the little birds, little birds chirping or whatever that is. It's just such a great song. He has such a beautiful voice. And then 13, another super classic. All these are classics. Uh, 13, we have Cyanide. Again, okay, so Cyanide, for me, feels like homosexual a little bit, where it's just so catchy, and the way he delivers things, something I've never heard before. I've never heard it done like that. And it's just freaking great. Amazing, amazing. Number 12, we have Please Do Not Lean. Please do not lean on me, I'm unstable. Yeah, just a great song about his... Uh, it's about him and his wife, I believe. And this came out before the album. And then he put it on the deluxe, so the bonus track. So just a great song. Uh, honestly, I thought it'd be top 10. I love this song. It's a sweet song. Uh, it was kind of sweet. And it's actually, it's more about like his insecurities as a man and being like a good partner and stuff. So and I guess it's not sweet. <laughs> he's saying, please don't lean on me because so, <laughs> he's unstable. So actually, it's not sweet at all. When I heard that, I was like, yeah, this album's going to be good. It was probably album of the year the other year, so. And then number 11, we have Little Rowboat. What the fuck is up? Ugh, I wish I could say. <laughs> yeah, another classic. It wrapped up the album beautifully. Or that EP, it wrapped it up nicely. And Little Rowboat, just great name. Great name for a song. We're going into top 10. Uh, top 10 Dylan Caesar songs ever in my opinion obviously so at number 10 we have complexities 
another song, Case Study 01. Uh, he actually has two, two, uh, two top 10 songs in here, which I did not expect from me because I didn't think I was that big a fan of this one. But the songs that hit on this album, they hit. Now, Complexities is one that I slept on a lot, which is great. I love sleeping on great songs and then discovering them later. I, I listen to this one a lot later. I kind of only maybe like a year or something ago, like I really started getting this song. Great song with really weird instrumentation, but it worked perfectly in this one. Number nine, we have Won't Live Here. Won't Live Here was around like 2015-ish, somewhere in there, uh, around Pilgrim's Paradise kind of. So now Won't Live Here, this came out this, uh, around the same time as another song that's coming up, uh, which if you're a big fan, you probably know right off the bat, which one's coming up soon. Uh, but yeah, Won't Live Here, just classic, beautiful and if you play this like walking in the morning or something where you're just yeah it's just it just hits so different number eight we have death and taxes i freaking love that name <laughs> two things that's guaranteed <laughs> death and taxes was the intro and uh to pilgrim's paradise well, this one is just elevated by the instrumentals and there's a little bit more of a hard hard drums in there and then there's that little guitar riff and the guitar just a great song. Amazing way to open up the album. God, I love Pokemon's Paradise. Number seven, we have the best intro he's ever done. And I don't care what anyone says. Best intro he's ever done. Ocho Rios. If I told, like, how many times I've listened to this album. And I, I like to listen to albums start to finish. Typically when I listen to albums. Like masterpieces, at least. And this one, like, just every time I listen, it gets better. It might be... It's easily top three for me, actually, on... I forgot what this album's called. <laughs> I'm so stupid. What is it? I had never enough. Okay. My absolute favorite part of this is... In Montego Bay. <laughs> I freaking love that. All right. And then number six, we have Case Study 01 again. We have Superposition, which I think is the best song on there. Uh, track number seven, too, which is great because it's kind of in the middle, and I love that. And this one did have a little bit of a, a weird experimental, but... It wasn't experimental with like the vocals and everything. It was more so like there was a little like humming, high pitched humming thing in there. It was really cool. Uh, almost like angel, like a choir, like or like an alien landing or something. It has that weird sound in there, but it just works so well. Okay. Top five Daniel Caesar songs of all time. At number five, we have classic Get You. Featuring Caliucci's. And this is one of my favorite features from her. I and I, like this is probably where I first heard her. And just amazing classic. Uh his biggest song to date, I think, I wanna say. But this one just made me such a fan. And the video is so freaking cool where he's just singing and yeah. <laughs> this one's the one that really made me like, wow. I know it's cliche that this is the one that put me out of it. His biggest song, but uh, yeah, let's just keep it going, honestly. Uh, number four, we have another song from Fruit and Hold Me Down. This one was a sleeper for me for a while. I didn't, because look, look, the first three songs, one of the greatest three track runs ever. Get You, Best Part, and Hold Me Down. If you love me, baby, send me your favorite. I just like when he he rides the beat and just does unique flows and different deliveries. I love that. And that shows because a lot of them my are in here. Uh, homosexual. Homosexual. No, I said homosexual. Homosexual and this one. Uh, a couple others where he does that. Just kind of cliche, but number three, Japanese Denim. It easily his best single he's ever done. Or any, not on that album, like. Why would he not? What is he thinking? Why would he not put this on Pilgrim's Paradise? Oh, they would raise it so much. I think these three songs are perfect. Uh, now, I'm saying my top three. I think this is the start of perfect. Just a perfect song. Uh, everything about it. This vocals, the backing vocals, uh, instrumentals, and the length of the song. Just everything's perfect about this. The name, I love that name, Japanese Denim. Yeah. I think Hold Me Down, Get You are like 9.8s or 9.9s. And these next three are just 10s. Uh, Japanese denim starting in. And then following that, we have Let Me Go. Oh, my God. 
Let me go, man. This song. Just like the first 30 seconds. I'm trying to leave. Why won't you let me? Like, how do you not just go into a trance and just, just beautiful. I think it was one of the singles as well, which is like <laughs> crazy. Or if it wasn't, I'm not sure. I forgot. Don't don't quote me on that, but perfect song. And the greatest Daniel Caesar song ever, I think his most perfect piece of art is number one, always. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> like look at these top five. I don't even, always just one of the most beautiful songs. Uh, just a perfect song. Wedding song, just beautifully written. Everything about it. So yeah, like look right here, you can see uh, the top two songs I think are off of uh, Never Enough, which is his latest project. If he comes out with something this year, oh, it's gonna be so hard to top it. And then two from Fruit and two as well. But I think that I think there's my list. So yeah, you can see you can see kind of the theme here. Uh, I just zoomed out, and yeah, here's my list. So all you know, fifty songs or whatever. Yes, fifty five, whatever. So you could see. Never Enough actually has a decent spread. But Pilgrim's Paradise has those three super solid songs up here. Um, but then if you go, and, yeah. Uh, these four case study kind of weak. But honestly, like, but then you have some Pilgrim's Paradise down here as well. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's kind of all over the place, to be honest. This is my list, and I don't care if you like it. This is what I think. <laughs> uh, I do. I do care what you think. Uh, comment, you know, whatever. Comment. Tell me you're mad at me or stupid list. Whatever you want. <laughs> I'm all for it. Any any comments, cool. An amazing artist. Dennis Caesar is an amazing artist, and yeah, here's what I think of just everything as of right now, or at least it was just a couple months ago. Some of these I disagree with, actually. So I understand if you do too. Thanks for watching.